Hey guys, I'm Tangle, and I'm going to show you how to lubricate a Glock. Now, not that that's any big secret. The owner's manual does a fair job of doing that, although some of the things they point out or point to with the little um, arrows in the diagram is kind of vague. I'm going to go a little bit beyond that and actually show you why those areas need to be lubed. And to do that, I'm going to take the gun mostly apart I won't disassemble the slide. There's a few pieces on the frame I'm not going to. But I want you to be able to see where all these contact points are and why you need some lubrication there. Before we get started, I'm going to say uh, just a, a word or two about lubricants. I use oil. I've read all the claims and posts about how great grease is. Grease is not a good thing for a handgun. A handgun is basically an open system. It doesn't have seals in it to keep contaminants from the outside from getting in. It generates a lot of internal contaminants and all that collects readily in grease. It's just not a good thing to do. And yes, I have read all the internet and the YouTube posts about packing rails with grease and sliding it on and what grease oozes out you don't need. That's just simply not good for a gun, and I don't know of any gun manufacturer that would uh, support that view. So let's get started. In addition to um, showing you some various lube points on the gun, and some that aren't even covered in the uh, owner's manual, I'm going to show you how to disassemble the Glock uh, beyond just removing the slide and barrel. So the first thing we want to do is make sure the gun is completely unloaded and totally safe, and it is. So I can now pull the trigger, ease the slide back, and remove the slide, and that's probably pretty much what everybody does. Now, um, there's a number of things in here we can look at, so I'm going to take this out and some of these things out. And there's a connector right here. Uh, this is so simple to do with just this tool. I can change out that connector in under two minutes and that's if I do some things that don't work out right so I can do it even faster so it's not a major deal one of the the secrets to disassembling a Glock is removing the pins and not only getting the pins out but the order that you put the pins uh, take the pins out in the first pin can either be this one or this one that doesn't really matter but before you take this small pin out right here you need to take the big pin out. Now, there's a little bit of a trick here. That pin is held in place by a hole in this slide lock. So there's a shoulder on that, and that pin won't come out if that shoulder is caught on this the hole in this slide rock lock. So the trick is is to push down hard on that, and it puts a lot of pressure against that. Then you can move it, and I just felt it click, and that should pop right out. Didn't get it that time. There we go and it comes right out. It's just a kind of a little trick. Uh, once we have the big pin out, we can take this pin out. It comes out hard sometimes. Sometimes they're pretty easy and the last pin is right here. And we're just all but done. Let me get the, forgot the block. Got to take the uh, locking block out don't always have to do that but it's good to have it out I'm going to talk about it anyway so here's our trigger mechanism housing as Glock calls it and that's as far as I'm going to go with the disassembly all right I'm going to begin with the trigger mechanism housing and show you what what goes on in here and some points you need to lube and again I'm going to be using oil and this is gun butter and keep in mind if you use gun butter it has to be shaken well it says right here, shake well. Um, I, one thing I don't like about gun butter, but it's about the only thing. Well, that and the price. So it shook well. And I'm not necessarily going to be oiling this as we go because I don't want to get that oil on my hands and try to put stuff together in the video and everything. Um, there are a couple of things that we need to be aware of. This, this curved surface right here rides on this little ramp on the connector right there. You can see them together right here. I'll try to get them separated a little. Here's the ramp and here's that rounded profile and when the gun fires it pushes down which makes the the 
trigger bar release the striker. So since these two points rub, you need a drop of oil right there. In fact, that's really too much oil right there. And these two surfaces right here and the underside of this, the other side of this surface under there, rub against each other like that. So it would be a good idea to lubricate that as well. Now, in the manual, there is an arrow that points to this area, and this is one of those areas where it's not real clear where they mean for you to put the drop of oil. Well, you want a drop to cover that little tab, as we've talked about, and that surface that uh, runs against it, and these two surfaces that rub against each other. You also want to drop on this. That's the part that causes the disconnector, or connector as Glock calls it, to reset the trigger. And you need a drop of oil on that. In the slide, that little tab that we saw here rides against this part of the slide. And you see that offset right there? When that tab, the slide, I'm sorry, when the slide reciprocates, it pushes that tab away and so we we'll have metal on metal right there so we want a little bit of lubrication there as well and that pretty much covers the trigger mechanism housing and the connector we're going to talk about this a little bit later we'll need some oil there too and I'll tell you why okay the next part I want to talk about is the locking block that's this thing right here it sits in the gun and I'm not going to push it all the way down in there like that and the barrel notice these lugs on the barrel ride like that so what we have here is the barrel lug riding on this locking block you see that see how it's doing that well, there's metal on metal right there, and probably under pressure because when the slide reciprocates, it's coming back with force and pushing the barrel down, forcing the barrel down as it comes back. So we would like a drop of oil on that, and, and again, there, even there, a drop is a lot. When the slide returns from its rearward position, it's going to move the barrel up. See that? See it move up? What's making it move up is this surface right here riding against this surface right here. So when it's in the gun and it's recoiled, we get that front surface loading, and now we have this loading back here when the slide goes forward and raises the barrel back up. It's not much, but it's, it's grinding on those two surfaces. So you need a little bit of oil right there. The, the neat thing about this, when you oil this, you don't have to disassemble the gun at all. You can drop a drop of oil right there and a drop of oil right there and it's done. That's really too much oil. Uh, you can almost wipe it with a cloth. It's just hard to get to. So I usually just drop the oil and let that go. All right, let's look at the barrel beyond just these two lugs. Um, owner's manual says to wipe it down with a, something like a patch with oil on it and what we're doing is putting some lubrication on here to protect the barrel and don't forget to get the muzzle and the whole barrel unit needs to be lubricated not so much lubricated as protected with a film of oil and it's it's kind of important to understand that when you're lubricating with oil you're not lubricating to a point you have gun parts floating or swimming in oil as a fluid Oil protection is the film that's left on the uh, object, whatever it is. In case of a barrel, we want an oil film on it. It protects it. It also lubricates it. It helps it slide against its other metal parts. Um, some particular parts I like to be sure get um, lubricated is this ledge right here. I don't sure how we can best see that. Perhaps right here this ledge right here and I like just to smear from a, a cloth some oil right there and I'll show you why 
when the guns and uh, barrels in the slide and the slide comes rearward you see this area right here that's where that little offset is those two rub against each other as the barrel moves up and down see that the same thing happens when the slide is pushing the barrel forward see that right there so it's worth putting a, a little bit of oil on there again this rear one just needs to be a swipe of oil uh, on a cloth um, I almost put a drop right there and kind of wipe some of it away the other point that needs to be lubricated is out here but typically you do that in the slide so we'll get to the slide in just a minute and talk about that okay to the slide I guess I'm a little bit guilty of over lubing the slide specifically these rails my tendency is to put a, a drop of oil or a bead of oil very light all the way down each and I am not lubricating I'm just pointing each rail I've since learned you might as well just lube this 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 and this and the reason for that is if you have oil on that and you put the slide on the gun and work it it distributes the oil in the slide rails where it makes contact there's a lot of area on this slide especially right in here that never makes contact with any metal surface and you can kind of see that so you don't need to spread oil all the way down through there that's just collecting more junk so we need to keep in mind lube lightly I mentioned earlier that uh, we generally lube that end of the barrel muzzle by putting a drop of oil in here actually and spreading that around it it's kind of hard to do I typically drop a drop on the barrel and put it in there and kind of work it around you can you can even put the drop on there and just kind of put it in there and work it around there we just want lubrication up here and be sure it's evenly distributed there are a couple other points that I lubricate that are not in the manual uh, this is the firing pin block plunger I put a drop of oil right there and that's again it's too much uh, you might wipe that with a cloth I also put a drop of oil right here and you got to be kind of careful on this firing pin um, so you're, you don't want oil getting in the firing pin chamber there's a hole up through there that this runs up through there and you can see the tip of the firing pin coming out there you don't want oil inside there so you have to kind of be careful about that now why those two places we go back to the trigger bar there's two places we didn't talk about oiling one is right here and I said I'd get back to it and if we put a drop of oil on that firing pin plunger that takes care of this metal contact uh, point right there the other is where the trigger bar sear right here engages the striker sear so those two things actually swipe against each other and swipe is a good term because they they just drag down across each other so I put that's why I put the drop of oil right there here's one more place in the slide that needs a little bit of lubrication it is talked about in the manual um, but it has an arrow pointing to an area right here now this slide and some other Glock slides can be made a little bit differently this one is flat in here you notice there's just flat surface so we need a drop of oil right there and what that is for is the barrel hood right here you can even see it's already picked up some oil rubs right there so anything that has metal to metal contact we want a little protection on and it just takes an oil film now a Glock 22 slide has a little groove down the center here here is 
a Glock 22 slide. I don't know how well this is going to show up on the video. You see this little groove right down through here? Well, where we need to lubricate this is this area right here. The barrel hood in this area right here is going to contact it right here. And of course, it's going to have some contact down through here too. So if we can spread one drop of oil right through here, you've got that lubed. Okay, I have most of the gun reassembled. I've reassembled the slide. I have this rear pin, of course, the uh, trigger mechanism housing, the locking block, and trigger back in place. And the only thing I don't have are these three parts here, the small pin, the large pin, and the slide lock. <clears throat> the reason I didn't put those in, I wanted to show you the correct order of doing this, so if you ever need to do this. Um, when we take it apart, we take the big pin out first, then this, and then the small pin. When it goes back together, you do it just the opposite. You want to put this small pin in first. Now let me show you what's going on here. I don't know if you'll be able to see this on the video or not, but this pin has some shoulders on it. They're very slight on each end, so it's a symmetrical pin. And this spring contacts that shoulder. So when they're in the gun, it's hard to drive this pin out with that spring catching on it right there. So when we go back together, we want just the opposite. We want to put this pin in first. Now when we slide the slide lock in, that spring engages that pin in the correct location, and now we can put this pin in. For some reason, this gun likes to have this pin go in from this side. I don't know what that is. I usually put it in over here. And I'm just evening up the pin. So there it is. Now I can slap all this back together and we're there. But I want to show you a couple of things with a gun assembled, how easy it is to oil all those parts I talked about. Right back here is that trigger sear part. You can put a drop of oil there. Here's the um, tab that engages the firing pin block plunger. You can oil that. Here's that little tab that is part of the connector that resets the trigger when the slide reciprocates. And right here is that surface on the trigger bar that engages that little tab down in there. Now, I know you're not going to be able to see all this, but if you can get a drop of oil right there, it will engage that tab when everything comes forward. So, so far we've lubricated everything I've talked about we have it the locking block yet without disassembling the gun further than just field stripping. Now, even with the slide um, assembled, you can see how easy it would be, and if the barrel was out, it'd be even easier. I'm just saving some time to get a drop of oil in here and a drop of oil in there, and that's done. You can put a drop of oil here and a drop of oil here, and that's done. And if you wanted to, you could lube this instead of that little tab and it might be better to do because that little tab really won't hold the oil surface and area that this will. So you can lube this entire thing. Uh, this is a Gen 4 spring and it's got a lot of metal on metal. I do put a couple of drops in here and let it kind of distribute itself and you need to do that on both sides. There's some here and some here and, and that's a very low maintenance thing. You don't need to do that necessarily every time you clean the gun but maybe one time to, to at least have an oil film on it. And that pretty well sums up the hows and whys of lubing a Glock.